Now there's a process. It's, I found it to be pretty repeatable, which I'll go through the, uh, uh, the path that I would recommend you go. And to start off with, you got to figure out where am I going to start? Don't try to do everything. I'm in eight marketplaces right now, about to go into Australia. And I wouldn't suggest doing it all at once. I didn't do it all at once. Just one piece at a time. So I give uh, credit to Joe Valley for coming up with the uh, uh, Napoleon analogy. But if you're here in the U.S., I would recommend you go into Canada first. I'll talk a little bit more about why I suggest that. And then I would go across the pond, so to speak, into the U.K. Use that as a base of operations to go into Germany and then maybe go into the other foreign language marketplaces in Europe. And then maybe go into Australia or Japan, maybe Mexico, there are a lot of different options for you, customers with real money that want to buy real products. Now, why I suggest with Canada, for the most part, they speak English there. The culture is very similar to the U.S. I looked this up, and Canada is the second largest country landmass-wise. But the estimates, because I can't find the official number, but the estimates are anywhere between 75 and 90% of the population lives within 100 miles of the U.S. border. They're like Americans who are really nice. <laughs> yes. And I would say the inventory logistics are a lot simpler when you start with Canada. And part of that is, is because, if, let's say you have products that you store in a warehouse or somewhere off Amazon, you could just take some of those and ship them up north and get started there. And also the sales tax is very similar to how it works in the US because it's added on top of the selling price. And then once you've launched into Canada, you can rinse and repeat and do it over again, go throughout Europe, maybe Japan, maybe Australia, and build that international empire. Then you want to validate if your products will sell. Who here uses Jungle Scout? It works when you go on Amazon.ca. It works when you go on Amazon.co.uk and Amazon.de. And you can look and see what products are selling. Just look for your keyword in those marketplaces. Now you have to switch your thinking to how you might look for product research now because the sales will be lower in the other marketplaces. But you have to start thinking like, okay, is there a possibility? Because let's say you have a product and you look at it and you're like, oh, it's only gonna sell <clears throat> one or two a day. But let's say you have five, 10 products. So one or two a day per product, maybe now all of a sudden that's five, 10, 20 units a day. Think of what you do to get another five, 10, 20 units a day in your business now. And you might find selling internationally is actually a lot simpler. So keep this in mind, if your product sells in the U.S. and similar products sell in the international marketplace you're looking at, it's at least worth trying with a small batch. Get some data and then figure it out from there. Is this worth selling in? So then you're going to have to register your business. And this is where people get kind of freaked out sometimes, is that you're filling out official forms and it's like there's a government logo at the top. Well, you know what? They have help numbers, and they, I've found, genuinely want to help you. Uh, you'd be surprised. I One time, because I have a service where I do a lot of this for people, and I called the Canadian Revenue Agency, and the lady I was talking to, I kid you not, asked me, is this person selling FBA or FBM? <laughs> They're used to it, because a lot of people do this. So they, they understand our type of business, believe it or not. And this is Form RC1, RC is in Revenue Canada, Form 1, and basically you're applying for GST and HST, which is their goods and services tax or harmonized services tax, and that alphabet soup is basically just sales tax. And the nice thing is, with their sales tax in Canada, you're typically, if you're selling less than 1.5 million, yeah, 1.5 million Canadian dollars per year, you file once per year. That's it. And then you apply for a non-resident import 
importer status so that you can import goods into the country. Now you want to add your listings into that new marketplace. So your garlic press or your fishing lures, you're going to go ahead and add those into the new, or to the new marketplace. Now one thing is just a word of caution is be very intentional about what labels get sent in. I'll talk more about sending stuff in, but especially if you have a product that has FN SKUs. Oftentimes when you create the new listing, the listing in the new country will have a different FN SKU. So if Amazon's expecting the Canadian FN SKU, for example, and you're sending them the US FN SKU, you now have stranded inventory because they don't know what to do with the warehouse. So the way around that is just make sure your inventory, sorry, whatever you're sending in inventory-wise matches on the label what they're expecting. So now you have to send in inventory. Who here loves the prices they give you on shipping inventory into a fulfillment center in the US? Yes! I have bad news for you, they don't do that there. So Amazon wants nothing to do with going across borders, but they will help you find some solutions. So there is a service provider network they have where you can look up and find freight forwarders and things of that nature. Um, you can also very simply use UPS.com. Here's a little ninja trick. If you have an account on UPS.com, I probably missed it for about a year, but they kept having this little banner at the top that says use promo code easy or fast. <laughs> Anybody notice that? Yeah. Yes. And what's the discount? 40%. 40%. I missed out on. And then they start hounding you. Like, oh, well, we can get you better discounts, so we'll have a rep call you. So that's one way you can save money there. And one thing I will say about Canada is I've come to learn, and I've been told this by people from Canada. If you live in Canada, you can tell me if you agree or disagree with the statement. But people will generally pay a little bit more for goods, even adjusting for the currency. Because if you live in, let's say, Vancouver or Toronto, those are really expensive cities. You're used to paying a little higher prices for things. Or if you live out in the boondocks, because... Canada is a very large country, you may have a general store that's like an hour away that has not a lot of stuff. So Amazon is a godsend to you. So if you have to pay a little bit extra, well, at least you have the stuff. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Now it's time to figure out how much do you send? So this trips people up from what I've noticed a lot of times because what they'll have this mindset is, is okay, if I'm ordering a thousand units of a product for the US, I need to order another 1,000 units for this new country. It's not the case. So think of it this way. If you're doing your research and it's looking like you're going to do 10 to 15% of your sales in the new country, 10 to 15% of the inventory would be a good benchmark. And you can even oftentimes start off smaller than that and get some data and then figure it out from there. And also... If you're not sure, like, you know, how do I get stuff across the border? You could tell your supplier, okay, I want to order 1,000 units. Instead of sending them all to the U.S., I want to take that 1,000 units, send 900 to the U.S., and 100 to Canada. Believe it or not, they've probably done this more times than you realize, but they never offered it to you because they didn't know you were interested in that. Or your freight forwarder oftentimes has done this many times. They're used to it. So then, when it's time to launch, you want to run PPC. I found PPC is good for me for launching. You don't have to do crazy launch strategies in the international marketplaces. I've heard a lot of people say it generally doesn't work for them to do that. Because um, it's not worth the return to do these crazy launch strategies when you just run PPC and go.